preached so, so much and shouted so much, I just almost lost my voice. Everybody stretch your hands out here and say, Pastor, Pastor. be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Boys, come! Yes, I'm an old temp preacher. I can preach pretty long. I was there when Brother Jack Coe called people stand up out of wheelchairs. I was in a tent meeting in downtown Dallas when the lame walked. The great general of God was still among us. And he was there when he asked me to come preach for him because he was tired. I looked at a woman in a wheelchair and said, rise in the name of Jesus. She got up and walked for the first time in 30 years. When it's walking with Jesus, stuff is exciting. Amen. First of all, you're going to be praising the healing, delivering, saving yes. Jesus for eternity. You say, I was there when the Lord did that. Right. Amen. Yeah. By the way, welcome everybody out all over the internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were there having a good time with the Lord. We can go Amen. Now, Father, we just thank you for wave after wave of your presence, of your glory, of your beauty, of your love, of your kindness, of your goodness. Yeah. And now we thank you for the wave of revelation knowledge and the Holy Ghost the teacher, the Holy Ghost the instructor as we go into this next wave of your spirit in this service to teach us and guide us and instruct us strengthen us and encourage us and empower us for this great end time harvest. In Jesus name, Jesus name. people God said, Amen. Amen. Amen Praise God, praise God, praise God Yeah Turn the air on a little bit more. We got people sweating. The women are glowing and the men are sweating. Amen? Amen. Is it a little warm in here? Now, I'm a little warm, but I get a little bit more excited than the average person. Did you understand that pastors are supposed to set the example? Do you understand that? Do you understand that people will never go any further than their pastor? So if you've got dead, mediocre church people, it's because you've got a dead, mediocre pastor that puts on a good show, but the spirits can tell the difference and they don't go any further. You can sit under a great speaker, but that doesn't take the people further with God. People are only going to go in the spirit and their growth as far as the pastor goes first. Amen? If you want an on-fire, on excited church, then bless God, you better be an on-fire, on excited pastor. You want people to raise their hands and worship God? Then you better not be in the front pew because you're too educated and sophisticated to get emotional. The people will only go and represent the seed that's planted in them. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I sold out my dignity a long time ago when I was a policeman in California. And I used to stand on the platform like this. I, I, my idea of raising my hands was like this because I'm a, I was an ex-Marine and I was a police officer. And even when I started preaching, I was so disciplined from being a cop that we're, you, you know, policemen don't get on the radio and say, oh my God, they're shooting at me! They're taught to control <laughs> themselves. You know that, right? So you're, you spend years controlling your emotions under the most stressful condition. So, and I took that into the pulpit. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, hallelujah. I felt it, but I couldn't show it. And until I showed it, nobody showed anything around me. Amen? Amen? And God kept telling me through my senior pastor and other brothers, you got to loosen up, man. I mean, I dress nice. I can tie a perfect knot. And inside, I love the Lord. But I was way too disciplined and sophisticated to get emotional. And I was on a platform about like this, sitting in some chairs on the side, in that church that I showed you the picture of in Redlands, California. And God, as just before it happened to, to me, I heard this voice. I've had enough of this. And the power of God hit me like a giant hand out of the sky. Bam! Knocked me back all over my chair. My feet were straight up in the air. All they saw was my feet sticking up in the air. And me praising the tongues and shouting. I got up and danced and danced and danced and danced and danced and danced. And I was dripping sweat. My shirt was all in tuck. And my tie was dripping sweat. And everybody's laughing. And guess what? I had no problem after God touched me expressing my excitement. Amen. When you get touched with the Lord, it will show. Amen. When you get touched by the Lord, it will show. 
But it's got to show in you before the other people can grow into it. Amen. Amen. You want people to be full of the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues? Bless God, you better do it in front of them. Amen. 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 Somebody say, I'm ready for more, Pastor. I'm ready for more. Open your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Actually, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to go to verse 11. This is, uh, what is this, number 9 or number 10 in our series on dealing with the origin of sin, Satan, demons, and devils. Have you ever encountered a devil? Yes. Yeah. Has anybody in this church encountered demonic presence in their lives? Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious, have you? Yeah. Uh, I've had so many people over 35 plus years of ministry ask me, Pastor, how do you know when there's a devil around? Trust me, you'll know. You'll have goosebumps on top of your goosebumps. You'll feel the presence of evil like you've never experienced it before in your life. That the whole atmosphere around you will change. And nobody will be going, I wonder if that's a devil. You'll know it's a devil. There'll be no doubt about it. It's a devil. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about who you're married to. Amen? Yeah. A lot of what we think is the devil are just little imp demons that we've entertained into part of our personality. Go over to them that for a while. We facilitated their presence. Remember what the motto is. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to want milk to wash it down. You start giving in to demons, they'll start taking more. Amen. You start trying to peacefully coexist, they'll take more. You try to get along, they take more. They are incubus, succubus spirits. They live off of your life flow. Amen. They are spiritual black holes. They take and take and take until what? They take all of your life. And then they laugh on your grave. Amen? There is no satisfying evil. There's no satisfying Satan. There's no satisfying demonic agendas. You have to conquer them. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. You can't counsel a devil out of somebody. You can't comfort a demon out of somebody. All you've done is fluff the devil's pillow. What good did that do? You made him more comfortable where he already wanted to be. The only way to get out of that warfare is win the battle. Amen. Let me say that again because a lot of people don't understand that. They try to go to another church where they're less pressured. They got to find another husband where they're less pressured, another job. They're always running to a greener pasture, but guess what? All the demons follow them because you never conquered them. Amen. They only understand the name of Jesus and authority of that name. And until you exercise authority and take dominion and cast them out, nothing in your life will change. Amen? Amen. We live in a generation that's done more to acquiesce, embrace, facilitate the demonic than any other generation. That's right. We don't cast devils out, we sedate them. Well, I have this problem. And we'll get to a couple of issues about the problem. I mean, really, folks, listen, I'm talking severely, obviously demonic stuff, and our answer is what? Send them to a doctor, put them on medication. Right. Now you just got a drunk demon. Right, right. You got a passive demon. How do you know? Well, like, what's wrong with her? She forgot to take her meds. What's that mean? Wow. The demon's manifesting again because it's not sedated. How many of you know people that just get flat screwy when they don't take their medication? Yeah. Huh? Yes. That's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You can sedate a demon. You can make him not able to manifest through a body so limp as a noodle. But once this medication's off, oh, you quit, give them their meds. They're off their meds. Now the demon's free. Amen. 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 Or you got, you got problems in the marriage because somebody's facilitated demonic activity so long as in their personality, not in their spirit, in their personality, controlling their body and their mannerisms. Well, let's counsel. You're going to spend the rest of your life sucking the life out of a pastor, counseling stuff that you'll never get free of until you exercise authority over it. Jesus didn't say go into all the world and, and sedate demons out. Counsel demons out. Love demons out. Well, show them enough love and they'll stop. <laughs> no, they want a lot more milk. Amen. Amen. Until you're out of milk, out of life, out of energy, and dead. It's called, the one good thing that comes out of counseling is there's a couple of phrases that are absolutely 
accurate is called enabling. You're enabling the demon to become stronger. No. Now say this with me. Until I exercise, Until I exercise. my God commissioned authority, not a demon in hell responds. Nothing changes. How many of you have switched jobs because the last place was full of knuckleheads? And the, once you get settled down the other one, they got bigger bozos there. Why? Because the demons don't leave. They just follow me in there and stir everybody else up there and join their pack of demons. Now you've got three folded children of hell you're having to deal with. Amen? Amen? Let's look at some answers today. Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That tells you right there that the... For you to be able to stand and deal with the demonic, you've got to be clothed properly in the spirit. You've got to be equipped in the spirit. You've got to be prepared in the spirit. To deal with spirits, you have to be clothed, equipped, and exercise spiritual things. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Now I'll tell you right there that you don't put on the whole armor of God and go take medicine to a demon. You put on the armor of God to deal battle with the demon. Amen? Yes. So until you do something spiritual, the spirits around you never change. Yes. Amen? Well, how do I get clothed? You get clothed in prayer. You get clothed in prayer. Amen? Put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wiles, the plans, the devices of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Look at somebody and say, your problem's not with people. That's right. Problem's your problem's with people that Satan's using. Amen. It's like looking at a tree and saying there's bad apples on the tree. Amen. And you stand there and the rest of your life, you just pick bad apples. Guess what the tree's doing? Anybody got an idea? Grow, continuing to grow bad apples. So what's the answer? you got to get to the root of the problem, which is under the surface where you can't see. You've got to sever it at the root and stop plucking the fruit. Amen. Amen. Everybody wants to talk to the apple, love the apple, take the apple down and be selective. You might hurt a good apple. Be careful. Meanwhile, that thing's just popping out bad apples. you got to sever the problem at the root. The root source of all this hellish, demonic, horrible Amen. sin Sickness, disease, tormenting of mankind is in the root, the spirit realm. Amen. And until you get in the spirit and deal with the spirit, nothing of the fruit of this natural realm ever changes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, the drastic necessity of a prayer life. Amen. And we're going to tie that together here in just a minute. I like you. She said, amen, and I could hear it. You know what that means? She's dealt with one or two demons in her life. Amen. You amen that from experience. Everything else is out of politeness because you haven't figured out who you're fighting. Well, if I hound my husband long enough and make him give in, there'll be peace in the house. No. Something else is going to pop up, and you'll have to have killed the knucklehead to get peace back again. Because there is no peace because there's not a spirit... Present called the Prince of Peace. Amen. Ah, I wish I could sing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I got See, you should start saying when truth lands in your lap, not back up. You know why? Some of us have spent years with people we love tormenting them into submission. Yeah. You know what happens when you leave the house? I throw myself on the floor. Because you never dealt with the spirit of rebellion. You dealt with the flesh. Husband number three will work this time. No. That's good preaching, yeah. folks. We've spent lives doing this because we won't obey the wisdom. Yeah. Amen? Amen? 
Hallelujah. Put on the heart. For we wrestle not with, against flesh and blood, our battles in the spirit, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. Amen. Now, you can look at natural wickedness, wickedness and identify spiritual wickedness. Amen. Yes. Okay? Listen, folks, let me tell you something. There's a lot of truth. I spent... 15 years as a policeman in Southern California, another 15 years on the street in, in Dallas, Texas, and 35 plus years in ministry. When they say, I don't know what happened, something made me do it, I'm telling you, something makes people do it. Right. It is absolutely real. Sometimes it is an excuse, but many, many, many times a spirit will come over somebody, they'll commit a bit of murder, and honest to God, not even remember doing it. But somewhere in their lifestyle pattern, their, the pattern of their life facilitated a demon able to come in on that easy. Like a lifestyle of drugs, a lifestyle of alcoholism, a lifestyle of pornography. And then it's not that hard to come in when all the other doors and windows are wide open. Amen. You facilitate your enemy by not living submitted to the word. Amen? Amen. I know that's me, but you know what? We need me. We're in the last hour. we got to grow up fast. What you need grace for is to raise holy hands and say, Father God, grace me to learn fast. That's what you need grace for right now. You need grace to lift up holy hands and say, Holy Ghost, please come quickly. Teach me fast. Make up for lost time because I'm in the heat of the battle. And he'll do it. But he won't play games with you. He just, listen. Oh, glory to God. Let's try to stay on my notes. I don't have enough time to take another rabbit trail. Tamina, did you address this podium? Because it is short. <laughs> <laughs> against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able, that you may be able, not hope so, not maybe, but absolutely able what? Withstand. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having all done all to stand, stand therefore. Now listen. Amen. What's the evil day? Actually, in the Greek, it means an era. We're in the evil days. Uh -huh. That's more of what it is implying in the Greek. But I'll tell you what, the evil day is when Satan shows up on your front porch. Mm -hmm. That's right. The evil day is when you get a negative report from a doctor. The evil day is when you when they file for divorce, the evil days when your kids running around the streets, you haven't seen them for three three days. The evil day is when evil shows up in your here and now. And is planning to try to knock the slats out from under your feet so that you never recover and spend the rest of your life being an evangelist for hell. God doesn't heal, God doesn't deliver, and that stuff don't work. That's the evil day. And God wants you able to stand and come out of that day into the next day victorious with Christ Jesus. And hopefully have demonstrated your authority in the spirit realm so strong that that particular devil doesn't show up no more. Now there's only one, they only need for a season. You know what that season is? Thank you, Father. He does this. What's he doing? Is he going to touch that computer again? Is he going to key up the pornography again? He ain't touching because you woke the fire out of him last time. But he, he's, this is his season, his season of walking about seeking whom he may devour. That's right. Is he going to cuss her again? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, the, him and Jesus, they kicked the fire out of him. And, uh, yeah, he, he showed his stuff, but if he gives me a chance, if he gives me a chance, yeah. if he gives me a chance, I'm coming back. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, raise your voice. Go ahead, raise your voice. <laughs> Toss her. Punch her in the head this time. Wow. Come on. All, all seven of you, worse than me. Come on. He opened the door. Let's go. Yeah. The season st stays as long of abstinence as you stay stuck with God's 
word. You shouldn't have to deal with him again. But there's going to be another one don't know your address. He just stumbles across the front yard and tries you. Then you got to deal with him. Then you got to deal with him. Then you got to deal with him. Why? Because we're in a battle that never stops. And it's not, it's not all about you, darling. This is where you've got to keep your reserve with Christ Jesus. It's about the lost and dying world that doesn't know their left from their right. And their only hope of deliverance is the ones that are in the light, showing the light, and bringing the light. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm too busy dealing with my demons. Exactly. Get serious with God and get out of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's the evil day? When Satan shows up. When demons show up. In other words, every time they show up, you better be ready. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Now, I'm just going to read a couple of things real quick. It's not really that. It might help a little bit because a lot of people think that those that list there is a list of spiritual rank structures. It's not really that. Because I looked it up in the Greek several years ago. I looked it up again the other day just to make sure I was reading this right. Principalities, obviously, is arche. Arche in the Greek. And it means chief, first, cornerstone rule. In other words, a lot like Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Principality is the chief cornerstone of the evil structure. So they're the, they're the big guys under Satan. The archangels of hell. Amen. There are the principalities that corner over districts and territories that all the other demons submit to and take orders from. Amen. 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 And that's what you're wrestling with. And they're organized and they're calling shots and they're looking for opportunity and they got a war plan and we're just trying to make it to our next day. How equipped for the, the trauma of warfare are we really? Pastor. No, it should be the said the Lord. Amen. And then come brag to the pastor how Jesus is faithful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Powers is exosia. In the, in, the, in the kingdom of God, it's dunamis. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. That's explosive power of the Holy Ghost when he comes inside you to work through you, on you, and out of you for the benefit of lost, suffering humanity. But this one here is, is oppressive pressure and force to work on you and against you. Against powers that try to force you down and out of life. Anybody feel that kind of pressure? Almost daily in these days? That's a spirit, folks. How many? Now, now listen. I'm going to address something. I hear. I hear it chronically all over the place since COVID. Since it was unleashed on purpose against man. And it says, "I'm tired all the time." Chronic fatigue. The scripture plainly says that in the last days, he he wears out the saints. Why? Because they're walking in their own flesh, not ex exploding against him with dunamis power and authority. So they're just trying to endure through the exosia, demonic hellish pressure coming down on them. Okay. That's good teaching. Amen. Amen. That spirit of constantly being fatigued means you're under a demonic focused pressure. You better rise up with dunamis. Amen. It's, and, Explode through that exosia. Amen. 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 Let me say it again. Constant chronic fatigue is spiritual. It's a spirit behind it. Resist it steadfast in faith in the power of the dunamis Holy Ghost. It is a warfare issue. You should not be tired. It's not natural. It's not God's plan. Rise up and do something about it. Amen. 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 That's, that's worth coming to church right there. Amen. 
Then it says rulers of darkness. Cosmic crypto. It just means ruler, but actually, how many of you uh, know that the, the, the Bible says that the, the word was made flesh and the word was among us and walked among us? Amen? Yes. Well, that's actually exactly what it's inferring. What it says right here, the rulers of darkness, it's, it's, it's talking about a title given to Satan. So basically it's saying that he's got his word going out, reflecting his personality in things that are said. Amen. That's right. What's that mean? Your mouth can reflect his kingdom and get stronger in your life, or your mouth can reflect the word of God and he gets stronger in your That's life. Right. So it's not talking about a rank structure all the way through that. You need to know that. What's coming out of your mouth? That's Marching right. orders from hell most of the time. I never get ahead. I take one step forward and get three steps back. I get a little bit of money and something breaks down. I have peace for a couple of days and the kids do something crazy. And you're just reflecting the personality through your spoken words of hell. That's exactly what that means in the Greek. And you're supposed to war against that, not just say, well, that's people. You're snared by the words of your mouth. It's spiritual what you're saying. Amen. That's right. Come on. We have what we're saying. What you don't want to do in the heat of a gunfight is stand up and say, over here! And that's exactly what people do in the heat of demonic fire. Well, here we go again. I never get, always get the flow. And you get more demonic spirits of sickness coming stronger and stronger every year. Reflecting his will in your words. You got a battle against your mouth. You can't, how can you defeat an enemy? He said, I know you're going to sucker punch me. I know you're going to kick the fire out of me. I know this, I'm going to lose in this fight. Really? And that's exactly what you sound like when the battle's on. Look at somebody and say, you know what? I really am glad God brought me here today. That's good. Amen. 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 I'm glad you're here. Spiritual wickedness is panorea. Depravity, malice, iniquity, and hurtful displays. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now I want you to look with me over at, uh, let's go to Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18. 18, and I'm going to speed it up, so we're going to close here in just a few minutes. Glory be to God. we got a guest speaker coming August 22nd, an associate minister of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. This man is as close to Brother Copeland as you can get. He's going to be here August 22nd. Please invite people. Make sure you're here. We're going to have a feast of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Matthew 18, 18, are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. Verily I say unto you, Jesus is talking, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Stop right there. Amen. That means that the spirit realm acknowledges, honors, and responds to what you say. That's right. Let me say that again. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That means whatever you say and you decree and you declare, the spirit realm that you cannot see is set in motion by honoring and adjusting to the words out of your mouth. Amen. When's God going to do something? When are you going to start talking right? Amen. Well, how come this always happens to me? How come you never change what you say? The spirit realm honors and responds to your words, good or bad. Well, how do you know that? Let's keep reading. Shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose or allow on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, in the Greek, it actually says this. Are you ready? Both sides are equally correct. But the first intent of that teaching of the Lord is this. Whatsoever you bind has to be something that is bound in heaven already. 
then they will enforce what you're agreeing with them. Because it goes on to say that where two agree is touching anything. The first person you've got to agree with is Jesus. And if what you're saying doesn't agree with the word, you're not agreeing with the Lord because he is the word. Amen. Now, the second thing you agree with is a prayer partner. Amen? Amen. Now it's me and Jesus and me and Jesus. That's why he said where two or three are there, I'm among you. Amen. Amen? So first of all, is this allowed in heaven? No. Is there sickness in heaven? No. Now you have an obligation to bind it on earth. But I couldn't bind heaven if everybody's walking around on crutches in heaven. So he will not respond in honor to something you're decreeing against what is established in heaven. That means this. You've got to stop echoing the personality of hell by saying, God loves poor folk. Find me poor folk in heaven. Sounds real spiritual, makes you look humble, and everybody wants to make you a deacon. And it's straight from hell. Amen. But you don't pursue money anymore than running around picking up pieces of the gold in the streets in heaven and hoard it. It's there forever. You don't have to worry about it. So they never pursue prosperity in heaven. Prosperity is just part of being there. So is it in the kingdom realm when you just shut up and serve God. How can we have a meeting? Are you serving or sitting? It's easy. Ain't nobody sitting around on the street corners in heaven. They all got jobs. They're all busy. This idea sit, soak, sour, just have a good time at church and do nothing for 20 years is straight from the pit of hell. So that you never get up and get into battle. Well, that's good teaching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Whatsoever you lose has to be what is allowed, permitted in heaven. And again, I say to you that if two shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them or for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen? Say it with me. The spirit realm, the spirit realm responds, responds and honors and my prayers. My words, my declarations. I'm surrounded right now as a lifestyle, and the battle that's surrounding me right now is what I allowed and permitted last year. Amen. And it's still there because it has not been dealt with. Amen. It's that simple. Because once I talk right, the spirit realm is going to adapt and respond right. Why doesn't people get excited about that? Because we don't want to take responsibility. I married this knucklehead. Now I spent a, 10 years trying to get God to change it. And God told you all along, don't be unequally yoked. Amen. But he's tall. He's dark. He plays the guitar. I'm going to talk about you, Alan. He plays the guitar. He's handsome. He's got big muscles. And he's full of rats in his heart. Amen. And you just chiseled out your little personal watch. Claim God brought him to you, married this heathen, quit the church because the pastor told you he was an idiot, and now you're going through therapy for 20 years. God changed him. God fixed him. God didn't even want him. Not your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be all right. Let me give you 35 years plus of. Is this all right, Judy? She's so crazy. She's going to bless the pastors, honey. So silly. But I'll tell you the truth. The first sign somebody's losing a battle is they lose their song. They stop praising. There's no praise in them. Second sign they're losing the battle is they lose their dance. And people that dance in front of them offends them. And I'm not talking about in clubs, I'm talking about in front of God. All you gotta do is just stand there and watch people. Yes, he's losing the battle. He's, he's lost the battle. <laughs> God help me. You know it's true. Sister, sister Pickleface and brother uh, Kumquat. You guys are excessive. I'm going over here to this church where they don't expect to be happy ever. <laughs> and I'll be. 
normal to them. Seven years old, I can dance better than these kids because they've lost the battle. <laughs> Jesus is good. I'm telling you, walking with God will put a song in your heart and a dance in your step. All I got to do is take your pulse and see if you're dancing or not. Now, Tony never could dance, so we'll put nothing on it. You want to break the chairs, ruin the furniture, try to get Guido to dance. <laughs> Yay, Lord. That, that's breaking loose for him. God's going to bless him with a gift. God's going to bless him with a gift. Uh, but I'll tell you what, when the arrows and the bullets are flying, yeah. that's the one I want next to me. Daryl don't dance too good either. He's like, <laughs> He's got my back and he's got my yes, sir. Don't worry about it. My armor is bare as a bear. You can't dance. <laughs> Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 12, 27. Let's look over there real quick. <laughs> Say, when I talk, when I talk. Spirits, obey spirits obey and respond. And respond. Good ones. And bad ones. Amen. So if nothing's changing, nothing's changing, what I talk has to change. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know people as predictable as a time Timex watch? Good morning. <laughs> well, if you say so. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that a great ball game? It's okay. They're so predictable. They're constantly suffering. You hang around with them, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to wrinkle up. You're going to get saddled with them. All spirits impart. Holy ones and evil ones. All spirits impart. I hang around with an adulterer. Strange people start looking good after a while. I hang around with a drunk. Guess what? You kiss them once, hey, your breath stinks. You kiss them 300 times, you'll be drinking with them. All spirits impart. It's called impart impartation by association. You are what you hang around with. Poor companions corrupt good lifestyles. You don't deal with demons, demons will deal with you. You try to get along with unclean, you will end up unclean. You hang around with the holy, or those that are striving for holiness, you will become a striver for holiness. Amen. All spirits respond to what you say or don't say. You don't say nothing, they'll increase. You say something, they decrease. You are living with what you allowed last year and have not dealt with sufficiently. Impartation with me, I'm not having it. Amen. I, thought, I disagree with you. I'm not taking any of it. Amen. Not. Good. Good. That, that, a quality decision is the first step for every change in your life. Amen. Quality decision is not, uh, uh, what, what is it that you do every New Year's? Resolution. Resolution. Because how often do they lose weight and how often do they stay in the gym? And how often do they quit smoking? And how often do they quit drinking? Mm -hmm. Say never. never. That's out of the flesh. But a quality decision is out of your desire to agree with God. Right. And it's a decision that once you make it, there is no longer any debate about it or turning away from it. That's right. Everything in your life has to burn to the ground before you change your decision. That's right. That is required for every single step of change in your life. All spiritual change hinges on first a quality decision to deal with it. And I'm going to deal with it until it leaves and changes and gets out of my life. 
And I will not settle for anything less. And I will not discuss it with anybody. And I will not change about this. I had to do that to be a preacher of righteousness and not close the doors. Yes. I had to do that to be able to say, I don't care what happens. If I lose my house, my cars, and everything, I'm not taking the shot. Amen. You won't have boldness in the face of the evil day without a quality decision in your life first. Did you hear me? Yeah. Oh, boy, here we go. Cause, 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 in case I forget, your battles have to be one in your heart with one right. in your right. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he becomes. Amen. Until you say, I'm not having no rat jerks in my life anymore. You're going to be surrounded by rat jerks. Amen. And you're going to, they're going to make you ready. Yeah. Cheesy little rats. Taking all you've got, making it look like they're your friends. Amen. That was prophetic. I just spoke to somebody. Amen. 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 Showing up when your income tax return comes. Oh, I'm your buddy. I love you. You're so pretty. And after they spend all your money and blow all your money and drink all your money and smoke all your money, then they're not gone until they're gone until the next income tax return. Amen. Amen. And we can't ding, 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 figure this out, can we? How come he never changes? Because you keep refilling his milk glass. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. That went over real big. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're realizing that we have discovered the primary enemy. Me. The, fra the phrase is absolutely true. We are our own worst enemy through a lack of quality decisions in our life. Just putting up and hoping someone maybe for 20 years. Amen. Amen. Do you realize that every abused wife, 99.9% .9 of them, in severely abused relationships end up murdered by that person they make excuses for? Now, if you're not going to understand that in your whole life, just understand the numbers. I'm not talking about, you know, well, he verbally abused me. Big woo. But I'm talking about real demonic manifesting where you're getting beat, your eyes are black, your lips are split, there's bruises all over your body. Every one of those women that stay with them, 90.9% .9 of them end up murdered by them. And out of those, every one that they have a daughter, 99.9% .9 of the daughters end up in abused relationships because the spirits keep going through yes. relational yes. family trees. Yes. And it could have been stopped by a quality decision. Yes. And the authority of the name of Jesus. And recognizing it's a demon that it's up to me to deal with. What did I say? Matthew 12? 27. And if I, by build, by bills above, they're claiming Jesus was of the devil. How many of you know you're not going to walk powerfully with God worried about what marginal, comfortable Christians think of you? That's right. Every single step you take forward and higher in the kingdom of God, all the marginal Christians are going to say, you're a fanatic, that's excessive, you're arrogant. Until you just sit down in the same trough that they never escaped from. Every time you actually say, I pray God heal me. Oh yeah, you're just making that up in your head. You're weird. Every time you say, I pray to God give me a financial increase. Oh, you're arrogant. You're just walking around proud. They're going to pick on every in increase of the kingdom in your life. You just got to settle it. I'm going, though no one falls, I'm going with Jesus. Though no one falls, I'm going with you. Until you settle that, you'll do this, they'll scream, and you'll do this. You'll do this, they'll scream, and you'll do this. Until you just go nowhere further than the level where the demons allow everybody else. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is healing people? Oh, that's not the devil. That's what they'll say about everything you do for God. Just settle it. They thought Jesus healed by the devil. 
Oh, that Holy Ghost stuff is of the devil. You sound just like your great, 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 great grandfather talking to Jesus. Amen. That's exactly what I tell him. That demon hasn't changed in five generations. Now he's talking through you. Amen. And if you, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by what do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come among you. How does the God, the God of the kingdom and the kingdom of that God show up in lives? By you doing your part. You want to live in hell or you want to live in the kingdom of God? If I, by the finger of God, moving through me, there it is. Until you turn this over to God and say, God, do your kingdom will in my life. God does nothing in the natural. Why is the world going to hell? Because the church has done nothing. That's right. Come on, brother. That's right. Or else how can one, watch, here we go. How can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then spoil his house and take his goods. Hold your finger right there. We're going to look at one last scripture. Isaiah 14 again. We looked at this before, but we got guests now and we need to see this. Are you learning something about the demonic realm and demons? Amen. Is this helping you? Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 14, look at verse 17. We get there. Say amen, amen like they're plenty hostile. Amen. amen. Thank you, Father. Let me back up to 16. They that shall see thee shall never really look upon thee. He's talking about Satan. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the whole earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness? And destroyed the cities thereof? Now watch. That opened not the house of his prisoners. Look at Pastor. If you keep thinking that someday Satan will get tired of making you sick, someday he'll stop picking on you, someday he'll stop messing up your kids, someday, 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 he never releases his prisoners. Amen. It's never going to happen until you happen in this situation. With the name of Jesus and the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost and the spoken word, he will not let you go. He won't let anybody else go. He'll never release the prisoners. Who's the strong man? Satan. What's his spoils? Lost and dying humanity. And they'll never go free until you find him and you go in and you set him free. Now let me give you just a couple real down-to-earth, honest to God, I was there when it happened because it happened to me. Stories. Is that okay? Amen. And then we'll close. I was invited back when I was a preacher. Just got started into the ministry. I was born again in the front seat of a police car. A good Baptist deacon deputy led me to Jesus. And I got raised up in the ministry just like I'm raising up you guys in the local church. Not sent off to a dead Bible school. And trained into things. That, and that somebody actually invited me to come preach. My first message. This is actually my second message. My first message was in a little four-square gospel church out in the desert. They had ten people there, out in the middle of nowhere. And my offering was four dollars. I had it for years, I framed it. I didn't even cash the check. That was my first, first time I got to minister. The, a month or so later, somebody had heard about me through some people in my church, because I was always exhorting and laying hands on people and what. And I got invited to minister at a full gospel businessman's uh, luncheon right there in the Banning Pass area, and it was very well known and very well attended. I go, wow, praise God. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, you don't go anywhere near that meeting until you fast and pray three days straight. Yeah. And I did. Of course, my pastor raised us on fasting and praying. You've got to enter into the Spirit. You've got to be sensitive enough in your spirit that you can take your spirit into the spirit realm to receive instructions and act out God's will. 
then once it's acted out in the spirit realm, it's manifested in the natural realm. Amen. So I'm in fasting and prayer and coming up on the third day of the, and I went into a vision. And in the vision, I'm standing on the platform at the business business. It was in a huge restaurant. They always did them in restaurants because they, they were lunches. And, and I saw in this, in this vision a woman get healed of a, a chronic back problem, a man get healed of a severe skin problem, and another man get healed of migraine headaches. So I get the day comes, I'm fasted up, they're all eating, I'm not eating. God said, don't eat a bite until after the service. <laughs> this is a free meal, too. I'm nothing. I, I'm obeying God. Then they put all the plates away and the waiters are coming and going. And they get up and they introduce me and I'm sitting on the platform with the five or six major businessmen in the city. And they said, Pastor T.C., come and share the word with us. And I get up there and I shared the word and then I went into the spirit realm. I said, and God showed me a woman with a back problem. If you respond, the presence of God is going to heal you. Now listen. You don't understand how your lack of obedience affects the obedient ones. You don't understand how your lack of obedience affects the obedient ones. I can't even tell you how many times over 35 years of ministry, traveling the world with Jack Cole Jr., a general of God, signs and wonders and miracles, every single time I preach, somebody comes up after the service, that was me. And why didn't you answer God when he's taught me? Because I want to make you look stupid in front of everybody else and wink in your face. Wow. <clears throat> so I'm saying, God, show me you're out there, lady. You could hurt crickets. Nobody's even praying in tongues. Nobody's even helping me a little bit. I said, ma'am, I know you're out there. Finally, here, <laughs> you know, everybody, all, two or three hundred people turn around. The reason I kept looking around is she was so bent over. Nobody could see her. I couldn't see her. And she was doing this. I'm not exaggerating. That's how fast she was moving. She finally had to try to raise me. I'm coming. And so they started. I said, don't help her. In the name of Jesus Christ, come up here and be healed. Now well, listen. You think that was a long walk? I'm like, you're going to find out if you believe what you're preaching. And you believe what you're reading. And you believe what you think you saw in the spirit. In the spirit, she was made straight. Right now, I'm waiting for the come true. <laughs> She's, she is literally like this. That's how long it took. And she, this is 300 people back. She got to the front row, broke the edge of the front row. And it sounds like, sounds like somebody took a baseball bat. Crack! place exploded. She had been bent over for 45 years. But she got straightened up first. First. In fasting and prayer and in the spirit realm. Then acted out and obeyed in the natural realm. Alright, who's, who's the person with the severe skin problem? That's me, brother. Now they're moving. Guy comes up and he looked like an alligator. He looked like an alligator, hard crusted alligator skin. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And he went like that and just started stripping off of his arm on the floor. Now, who's the person with the severe migraine headaches? And the guy jumps up and says, that's me, Reverend. He comes running out here. I've had migraine headaches and put me in bed for 35 years. Be healed. Now that one I didn't have a track record because he didn't have a migraine headache when I prayed for him. But all three things that I saw in the spirit manifested in the natural. Amen. Where was the victory? What would have happened if I didn't fast, pray, see anything in the spirit, just got up and had chicken? I'd had a good little message, everybody would have left. But nothing of the kingdom would have taken place. See, when you're wanting comfortable and normal, it's at the sake of somebody suffering. Amen. 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 Number two, I was out witnessing. Me and a couple other people, he's planning to get to our Mitch White. We're 
preaching in cars and people on the street corner. I was a street corner preacher, a prison minister, a tent evangelist. You've done it. I did it first. You name it. I've preached to the most unwanted, unlovely of humanity before I ever had a church. We finish, we're preaching, nobody responds, that's okay, you're sending the word forth, and the word doesn't return void, it will accomplish that which the Lord has purposed. Amen? I'm sorry, Farron, I'll be done in about five minutes. Walking by Kmart, there's a guy sitting on the bench, and as soon as I got here, I looked over, and the Spirit of God turned my head, and the guy's sitting there, and he looks up at me, and he's all bloodshot, he's a chronic alcoholic, Spirit of God rose up on me and said, Sir, Jesus will set you free. You think so? I said, Yes. You want to be free or you want to live like this and die in the streets? I want to be free. Now, folks, there were six people standing next to me. And I went over and I put my hands on his head. I said, Come out, you foul spirit. And you know what? That thing came out of him so fast. Not only did I feel it brush my arm, everybody standing there said they could hear it. His countenance changed instantly. Started blinking his eyes. My God, I felt something leave me. I said, yeah, I felt it too. It hit my arm. And everybody said, I heard it. And he goes, something happened to me. I feel different. I said, yeah, you're free. That devil's gone. Go, go rejoice. He goes, yeah, I will. And he starts out. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the bus stop. I'm going to go home. I've been away from home for 20 years. I'm going back to my mom's house. always say that's not normal but it's kingdom yeah. I don't have time for the other ones but I'll, tell, I'll close with this thank you for being long suffering the guest minister that's coming he said well give me some information I said service starts at 2 o'clock goes until the Holy Ghost is finished he touched me back. Are you serious? I said, I'm serious. There is no empty time. When he's done, we're done. Yeah. It's called the Sabbath because we're not supposed to have plans. Yeah. Got a call as a deputy sheriff. I'm going up Cherry Valley Boulevard to this house. A little old couple, about 70 years old, answered the door. It's a welfare check. I said, What's the matter, folks? They said, It's our granddaughter. Well, what's the matter? She's got psychological problems. I said, okay. So I go in there. And here's her granddaughter, 30-year-old woman, sitting almost completely naked in the corner, cross the legs, at least 100, 150 sharp point toothpicks wedged up each nose. Oh, my God. Blood gushing all the way down. Folks, I'm talking 100. She would sit there with a shoe drive them up her nose. And when she looked at me, I didn't see her, I saw a demon. And this is what's out there. They had pictures of Jesus in their living room. They had a Bible on their coffee table. They were nice, senior citizen Christian people with a demon in their house. And not a it was present for what to do about it. Yes. You go to church and told the Bible doesn't impress Satan at all. Amen. When you believe that Bible and open your mouth and deal with him, Amen. now that's a different issue. Amen. Amen. So I went over and said, okay, you're going to come with me. Ah, I ain't going with you. Baby. Folks, you go in the other room, I'll take care of your granddaughter. Went over and put my hand on her mouth and said, Shut up, you foul devil in the name of Jesus. Rolled her over, handcuffed her, and walked her out to the car. Did she stay free? I don't know. But I took authority over her right there. Living in the same house with the most ungodly manifestations. Going to church didn't stop it. Having a Bible didn't stop it. Being sweet didn't stop it. we got to get with that. Because that's what he's doing to people that don't know any better. Yeah. And he'll do it until you set them free. He'll never set them free. Amen. Amen.
You learned something today? Amen. Give the Lord a praise.